Hello, everyone. My name is Rakeev Sadiq. I'm a senior at Spring Valley High School, and I am here to talk to you all today about research. Now, I know what you all might be thinking. Oh, this guy is probably such a nerd. Um, and whenever I mention the term inquiry, the first thing that people often think of are people whose IQs often exceed their weight. Now, many of these people tend to hold advanced degrees and may have been child prodigies born with a microscope in one hand and a four-function calculator in the other. But the fact of the matter is that while some of these researchers do exhibit these traits and qualities, research can be undertaken by anyone of any age, of any size, of any race, religion, culture, at any time, anywhere, and on any topic. Whether that topic is a small, maybe insignificant, personal question that they feel the need to answer, or a large, complex, worldwide issue that confronts society. Now, one thing that all research studies have in common is that they tend to follow a series of basic steps to help the researcher evaluate the topic of interest more effectively. The first step is finding a problem or something that interests you. It can be anything, like what should I eat next, from uh, determining what best cleans crushed, <laughs> what, what best cleans water, to uh, how will my hair look Sunday, and how will, how will that affect who likes me and who doesn't like me. Now, the next step is gathering more information about that topic of interest and determining what you can do about that before hypothesizing what will happen if you take certain measures to find out more about that subject, and then analyzing the results, and finally repeating the subject, repeating the experiment. Now, the thing with research is that because it can be done by anyone, I believe that it can be done by all school kids, all students, and that it should not be limited to people just because they have advanced degrees. And I'd like to elaborate on one study that I did last week where I tried solving a problem that confronts me every day. And that problem is I'm always hungry. And I love Chick-fil-A. Now, the problem is while I do love to eat Chick-fil-A sandwiches, I hate paying for them because, let's face it, they're kind of pricey for a guy like me. And last week I found an opportunity. And that opportunity was an opening of a new location close to where I live. So, I did some research. I consulted the ever so reliable sources of Twitter, Instagram, and the six o'clock news. And I determined that there would still be some time and space left for me to go there and to win a prize after I come back from school because I calculated that there would only be 50 people because that's what all the sources said. Now, when I finally came to the scene, I found out that the estimates were dead wrong. I found that Instead, there were 103 people and that the prizes would only be given to the first 100 people who arrived as customers. So I had a decision to make, a decision that would ultimately influence this talk and why I decided to do the challenge. So what I found out more about that when I got to the scene was that if any of the first 100 people decide to leave from the evening until the time that the store opens, their spot will be forfeited to the next person in line. And so, based on that hunch, I made a hypothesis that if I took that next spot as an alternate right away, I would surely win the award because someone would have to leave because really, who's crazy enough to stay over and spend their whole night at Chick-fil-A? Except me. And um, really what happened was, <laughs> What happened was I decided to stay up all night, but I came completely unprepared. When everyone who stayed there brought tents and sleeping bags, I brought a lawn chair and a laptop because there were a few catches. One, I had school the next day and I had, t I had homework to do, so I brought the laptop. And two, it was getting pretty cold outside and it would get to a low of about 29 degrees and I only had one layer on and a sweatshirt. So I went there, <laughs> I stayed up all night, and, and I waited until the opening. And that was the adversity that I went through as a researcher in that particular instance, because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I could have failed, I could have succeeded. And so it was that uncertainty that really kept me going. This passion to find out what was gonna happen, this passion to find out would this effort pay off. And 
Ultimately, as the clock six, the store opened, and the employees filed us all line by line in numerical order. And so I needed four people to be absent because I was the 104th person to get there. It just so happened that six people were missing and that my hypothesis had been supported by the results. Now, now we can't just say that this experiment was successful because, as I said, all trials need to be repeated. So, in the future, fingers crossed, right? So, I decided to share that experience with you all today, not to boast my tenacity and my perseverance, but to show that anyone who has an open mind, who is crazy enough, who, <laughs> who's kind of bored and who has almost nothing better to do with his time, can really conduct a research project. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to have a PhD. Anyone can do it, especially young students, which is, why, which is what I wanted to get to today. Now, the thing with young students and children in general is that they are very open-minded. They have little self-consciousness, and they have almost no fear from experience. So this is why I think they make better candidates as researchers than adults, because adults have experienced things. They have to pay taxes. They have families. They have obligations that they have to meet. And so they're not willing to take as much risks. They're not willing to invest in unconventional or quote unquote stupid ideas that the kids might invest in. And when you compare a, ch a child to an adult, you see that the child has a lot more energy and that the child will therefore attack the task at hand with more enthusiasm and with more vitality than the adult would. Now, what I wanted to get to was the risk that you have to take in order to sustain a, 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 a valid research project. And so some of the risks that you have to take are your time, your dignity, and in my case, my, my, my sleep and my sanity. And so in this case of the Chick-fil-A example, what happened was I didn't get any sleep that night because I tried doing homework while staying up and making sure that I was one of the first 100 people there and making sure that other people had left. So because I had no sleep, the very next day as I was driving to school, I inadvertently fell asleep in the car for uh, seven minutes at a traffic stop. And I didn't wake up until a kind lady knocked on my window repeatedly. And so that was the cost that I had to incur. That was the price that I had to pay in order to achieve my goal. And that's one example of the risk that you have to take. Sometimes you lose your reputation. Sometimes you get embarrassed. So if any of you all want to uh, scold me or roast me after this presentation, feel free to do so. I accept it. I deserve it. And that's one, that's one thing you have to do in order to get something out of an investment or a venture, you have to put something in. It's kind of like gardening, where you plant the seed and you can't just wait for it to grow and just sit there and wait. You kind of have to invest more into it, whether it's water, fertilizer, more uh, sunlight. Everything has a cost. And the next thing I wanted to go over were the rewards. The rewards I got from doing this type of research and the rewards that I think that people elsewhere could get from doing other types of research were basically trying to find out more about themselves and testing their limits and discovering who they were. And so I, find out, I found out that I was not really comfortable with the cold and that, um, that I was not really good at multitasking. And for students, I, for students, for young students, I believe that they can try to gain a type of independence and a type of vitality that that is a sense of accomplishment, that they can do something on their own, that they believe in themselves, and that they can generate knowledge and information, and that this knowledge can be used to improve the state of the world, and that their opinions actually count. And through this knowledge, they can gain accountability, accountability for what they're doing, accountability for the results that they have produced, and that they can gain a better feel of what the world is and what they want to do with their lives. And the next thing I wanted to go over was how, as a society, we have somewhat inhibited this kind of growth by establishing rigid school systems that emphasize testing, testing, and testing, and teaching to the test, because we value testing and numerical data so much. We value tests so much because we believe it's more convenient and more efficient to quantify knowledge and to quantify progress, when in reality, knowledge cannot be measured, and the only person who knows how smart you are is you. I don't know how smart any of you are, and none of you all know how smart you are. Only I know that, and only, know, and only you know that for yourselves. 
And so I believe that by doing research, we can learn more about ourselves and what we are capable of and why we exist, what our purpose is and what our calling is. And that is what I believe the reward is. And in conclusion, I believe that I reimagine school as a place where we can do research and a place where we can freely express ourselves and to, ex and to express ourselves in a way that will further improve the productivity of mankind. If we want to try to solve these problems, we don't take more and more tests. We try to do research. We try to find out what causes those problems. We try to find out what factors are associated with those problems and what behaviors we can do to try to alleviate those problems. And so from one student to the rest of society, I try my best to spread this message and I try my best to do these wacky things to show that really there is no wrong way to do research and that in life I think everything has something to do with the imaginative process and trying to find out more about who we are and what we can do as human beings and I hope that you all have gained some of that from listening to me and I would like to thank you all for being here. Thank you.